Okay, good evening. Welcome to Geometry Project, uh, what am I on? 18. Geometry Project 18. This is section 2.9 of Geometry Revisited, and one of the most interesting theorems I have ever seen in geometry. Um, I'm, this is also a little bit of a complicated theorem. I'm going to try to get through it in 15 minutes. Uh, hopefully you'll stay with me because you're going to see something really incredible. Here's the theorem. It's called Morley's Theorem. The intersection point of adjacent angle trisectors in a triangle form an equilateral triangle. Now, it's just hard to believe that this could be true, uh, but it is, and I'll show you that it is. Turns out that the cover of the book of Geometry Revisited, in fact, shows Morley's theorem there. And let me just show you uh, a picture real quick, um, and then we'll get going on the proof. Okay, here we go. And I'm sorry, this is not, this is hardly the easiest picture to draw, so let me see if I can point things out to you. Here's my triangle ABC. And the dashed lines represent angle trisectors. So I've got these coming out here, these coming down here, and those coming up there. And those are the trisectors of the angles of the triangle. And the intersection points of the adjacent angle trisectors means where this tri trisector meets this trisector. That's one point there where this trisector meets that trisector, that's the second point, and where this trisector meets that trisector, that's the third point, and the triangle I've drawn in red is an equilateral triangle, and that is going to be true no matter what triangle we start out with. Again, this is an incredible theorem. I, I've never seen anything like this. I don't, don't remember this from when I read it the first time through in high school, but it's what a wonderful fact. So, let's get going on the proof. Okay, the proof, which is due to a mathematician named Naran, Narangar, <laughs> or something similar, uh, it is very interesting, but it requires a technical lemma before we get into the theorem that I'm not going to prove, but I need to show you this lemma because we're going to make, it's going to be critical in, in the proof. And here's the lemma. If four points, y prime, z, y, and z prime, satisfy the distance between them is equal y prime to z equals zy equals yz prime. And the angle yz y prime equals z prime yz equals 180 minus 2 alpha for some alpha. And as long as that angle is bigger than 60 degrees, those four points lie in a circle. Further, if there's a third, uh, fifth point, a, that satisfies y prime a z prime equals 3 alpha, then that point also lies on the circle. And let me show you the picture of what I'm talking about here. So here's my here's my circle. Or here are my points y prime z y z prime. Y prime z y z prime. They satisfy the properties of this distance, y prime z, z y, and y z prime is equal. And the angle y, z, y prime equals z, y, y prime equals 180 minus 2 alpha, so I can draw these triangles. Then, then, if you can draw these equal distances and these equal angles, then those four points lie in a circle. And if there's a fifth point, a, sitting up here above y prime z, such that the angle y prime a, z prime is 3 alpha, compared to the two alpha of those angles, then, the, then A also lies on the same circle. And we're going to make use of this lemma as we prove the theorem. I didn't want to get into the details of this proof. It's not hard, it's just that I only have 15 minutes and I want to, want to keep moving along. Okay. okay, now we're going to start attacking the theorem and hopefully I'm able to explain it to you quickly but also in a way that you can understand. So, the first thing I do is take my triangle ABC and I draw the trisectors at angle B, and I draw the trisectors at angle C, and I label the intersection point of those tri trisectors X and U. The first thing we're going we're to notice about this diagram is that the triangle UBC is kind of an interesting triangle. And the reason it's an interesting triangle is the other angle trisectors here, CX and BX, are actually angle bisectors in the U. B, C, because these two angles are the same, and these two angles are the same. 
And that means that x is the in center of the triangle, and if we draw the third angle bisector, it also is going to intersect at x, and that, that means this angle and this angle are the same. We don't know what they are, but, but we know they're the same. So now we're going to do something that seems a little bit artificial, uh, but it's going, to, it's going to be important in the construction of, of our proof. We're going to draw uh, line zx here and line zy here so that these are both 30 degree angles. Okay, and then we're going to say, what can we say about zx and zy? Well, the first thing to notice is that the triangle uxz and uxy are congruent. And the reason is, we know these two angles at the top are the same, we know these two angles at the bottom are the same, and we know they share a common side, ux. And so by the angle-side angle theorem, these two triangles are congruent, but that means zx equals uh, yx. And further, since we have a 60 degree angle here, I can connect zy, and I I'm going to know that this is an equilateral triangle, 60, 60, because it's isosceles and has a 60 degree angle in the middle. Okay, so that's, that's a first start at, at getting to the proof of this theorem. Now let me draw something else in. So hold for just a second. Okay, so just a, a tiny little bit of uh, extra information here on, on this next step of the proof. We called angle C 3 gamma. We called angle B 3 beta. So we're going to call angle A 3 alpha. Uh, and then we're going to notice that this triangle, UZY, UZY is also isosceles, and the, the reason is, you remember that UZX and UYZ were congruent, it means this side is equal to this side, so that's an isosceles triangle. The angle at U, which is angle BUC, equals 180 degrees minus 2 gamma minus 2 beta, and it means that these equal angles here, and I'm sorry this is probably getting hard to see, are equal to gamma plus beta. But since 3 alpha plus 3 beta plus 3 gamma is 180, alpha plus beta plus gamma is 60. So these angles at uzy and uyz are equal to 60 minus alpha. And the angle xzu, xzu, since it's just 60 degrees more, is 120 minus alpha. So we can actually say a little bit more about, about these angles, and it's, it's interesting to, to see what they are. Okay, now let me pause it for a second, I'm going to draw the next step in the proof. Okay, what I've drawn in now are li uh, line segments on AB and, and AC, and I've labeled the point Y prime there, and I've labeled the point Z prime here, and I've drawn it so that B, BY prime is equal to BX, and I've drawn z prime so that c z prime is equal to c x. Okay, hopefully you can, hopefully you can see that, and hopefully the picture reflects that. And so now we have a couple of interesting things. Uh, because we've drawn b y prime equal to b x, I know that this triangle is congruent to this triangle by side angle side. Similarly, I know z prime c y is congruent to y c x by the same reason. These two sides are the same as each other, and they share a similar angle, and they share a same side. So those are congruent, but that means the distance y prime z is equal to z z x, which is also equal to z y which is equal to xy, which is equal to xz. Now, in other words, I'm going, if I go from y prime z to y to z prime, those three distances are the same, and that should remind you a little bit of the lemma. We also just have to make sure that this angle, y prime z, y, satisfies the criteria of the lemma as well. So let me draw a picture to show you that it does. Okay, so we want to evaluate y prime z, y, y prime z, y, and make sure that it satisfies the conditions of the lemma, which is that it equals 180 minus 2 alpha. And the way we're going to take, the way we're going to see this 
is we're going to notice that the angle, I'm going to start using a different color, y prime z b and b z x are the same angle because those two triangles are congruent. And that means that this angle here, y prime z u, is the same angle because it's the supplement to this angle, to b z y prime. It, that adds up to 180 degrees. It's 180 degrees minus this angle. But since this angle is equal to this angle, that means this angle here is equal to this angle here. And we've already said what that angle is. So we've already said that that's 120 minus alpha right here. So that's 120 degrees minus alpha. And y prime z y equals 120 minus alpha plus this angle inside here, u z y. We've also calculated u z y already, which is 60 minus alpha. So lo and behold, we've just shown that, I guess I'll write it up here, y prime z, that angle, y prime z, y equals 180 minus 2 alpha. And so now we've shown that the points y prime z, y, z prime satisfy the conditions of the lemma, and that means they lie in a circle. So hold on one second while I draw the circle. Okay, so I've attempted to draw the circle in purple, and it's, it's not the best circle, uh, but I hope you can see it. And we just have one last thing we have to show here. The, the, these are chords on the circle, y prime z, z y, and y z prime, and they all are equal. And they may, they're starting to get hard to see, but here's, here's our point y, a little marker, and here's our point z. They're all equal. And that means if you draw the if you draw the line the lines connecting them from A, since those chords are equal, they subtend equal angles up at the top, which means these are the angle trisectors. And what that means is the intersection of the angle trisectors happens to occur at Z, Y, and X, which which is what we were trying to prove, and it means this triangle here, X, Y, Z, that we constructed completely completely artificially by just arbitrarily drawing 30 degree angles happens to be the intersection of the angle trisectors. Well, isn't that convenient? And so we've shown Morley's theorem that the intersection of the angle trisectors, of the adjacent angle trisectors, of any triangle form an equilateral triangle. That is one of the neatest theorems I've ever seen in, in geometry, and it's just an astonishing fact. It makes me wonder if you chop the angles of a quadrilateral in four, do they form a, do they form a square somehow? Or, a, you know, if you, if you do it with other, other you know, a hexagon, say, does, do they form a perfect hexagon? I have no idea. I, I, this, this is fascinating. It sh again, it just shows how rich geometry is. I hope this was under 15 minutes, and I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Thanks.